Good morning, everybody. Um, welcome to HGST. My name is Barbara Murphy. I'm the Vice President of Marketing for the Elastic Storage Platform Group. So I'd like to start by giving you a quick view of HGST. Um, many of you may not have heard of us, but we have, it's a company with a rich history of products that uh, address a vast array of the storage industry. Um, from starting from um, our baseline business, which is in hard disk drives, we've, we're a company that has developed technologies all the way from highest performance uh, PCIe and VME. Uh, we have a, a broad range of SATA and SAS SSD drives, flash array products, um, high performance, uh, uh, capa high capacity hard disk drives. But today we're actually going to focus on um, the uh, Elastic Storage Platform Groups, which is taking HGST's um, high capacity hard drives and creating an integrated platform uh, to address the Elastic Storage business. So what's our vision? Um, we want to become the leading provider of cloud data center infrastructure. It's a bold goal of the company and we believe that um, the core technologies that I showed you in the previous slide allow us to have the ability to be able to build very, very interesting infrastructure for uh, the next generation third platform cloud data center. So talking a little bit about that, I'm sure you're all very familiar with, um, there's some of us in the room that are a little older and we've seen the generations of growth in the data center, starting with first platform, which was really in the 80s. Um, and then moving on into the second platform, which really was about client server type of computing. And with the introduction of the mobile, social, internet of things, we're now at the point where we have to address another new platform to be able to take advantage of all the data that's been created in the new uh, data infrastructure. And we're calling this the third platform. Key things about the third platform that differentiate it from the second platform is the need for a velocity of data capture that we have never seen before. What we consider second platform data center infrastructure is something that quite frankly will be consumed in days by the third platform um, infrastructure. And the volume of data coming in is, is vastly higher than we've seen before. The variety of data coming in, it can be anything from sensors, mobile, your phone, your Facebook page. It can be something like uh, core data coming off sensors. We all uh, understand how we're going to have an embedded world of sensory data that's providing us better intelligence on how to run our entire world. For example, um, the freeway. How do we know where, how does uh, Waze get its information today? It gets its information today from sensory data that's on the freeway that we're providing in real time to our phones. And to be able to address that kind of infrastructure really needs a, a totally different uh, view of the world than we've had before, driven primarily by the need for object-based um, storage and interfaces. So if you look at um, what's happening from a data perspective, <coughs> the, on the left-hand side here, I'm showing you data that was provided by IDC in terms of you know, the third generation platform. The white line will show you what they consider the amount of data that will be created or replicated for that matter um, going out to 2020. And they believe that we're talking in the range of 40 plus exabytes of data compared to today where we've just barely uh, passed about 15 exabytes. So we have this massive exponential growth in the amount of data that we know is going to be uh, created in the next five to 10 years. On top of that, we have on the blue line here the capacity shipments, this is their prediction of what they expect physical storage capacity to look like. And you can see that there's a massive gap between actual storage data created versus data that c can be stored. <clears throat> and the prediction around that is that it's just too expensive to store all that data. More importantly, the third key item on this thing is what they're calling useful data created. And what useful data created is, that's the amount of data of the total amount that is actually has high value. And that gap is widening starting this year. So we have capacity shipped, 
versus useful data that we'd like to be able to store, but frankly, it, it comes down to economics. Can you affordably store that data? And so that is the opportunity gap that we want to capture at HGST with our elastic storage platform. And the key decisions that are going to be um, driving us from a storage perspective are simplicity. We have to have a, a, a storage infrastructure that can scale massively, but can do it in a way that really focuses the uh, DevOps and IT administrators on the value creation versus the integration of that infrastructure. Sorry, so you, are you saying that you want to store more of the data that has no value? Or you, no, we're you saying we want to capture the opportunity for, this is useful data being created. Yeah. This blue line is what they think we can affordably store right now. That gap is an opportunity cost for every business mm. because we every day deal with customers who do not want to throw away data but don't know where to store it. Okay. They've got to get it off their primary system. They want to put it somewhere else because they know that value in the data is a long-term thing. It is not um, an instantaneous moment. Uh, take an example of your genomic data. The more time we spend with genomic data, the more we will understand the human genome. The more we'll understand how to personalize that. So is that my genomic markers combined with somebody else's genomic markers will give us insight into things like cancer research. There is no timeline on the value of that genomic data, but the cost of storing that indefinitely is something that right now the, in, the enterprises a, as a whole cannot afford to do. We want to provide a way to close that gap between useful data and the cost of data storage. The other key thing about, um, and gets to that point exactly you said, it's all about affordability. This is all about dollars and cents. The affordability model for, for third platform has to be at, at the cost levels that we see with people trying to do a DIY model today at White Box. We have to, as companies that are providing turnkey solutions, we have to be hitting those price points. <coughs> the accessibility model will be spinning disk for this long-term storage because the physical amount of storage being captured is so high that you could not possibly um, get to the economic model with just Flash alone. Flash will be, I, in my view, a, a primary um, platform solution for, for, um, for tier one storage. And we will see an increasing amount of that. But as regards Active Archive, which if you think about it, is an, a really a new category we're creating between traditional tape and primary storage. That's what we're calling Active Archive. That has to be on spinning disk because that's the only way you can get to the cost model. And last but not least, from a scalability perspective, our traditional block and file based systems cannot scale at the level that we will be uh, creating data. It will all move to an object based store with intelligence built around metadata so you can, you can actually um, sort through data much more effectively with metadata tags that you have on objects. The um, scalability that you get from things like erasure coding, which we will talk about later, all of those things are critical, and that whole infrastructure is critical to be able to take advantage of the third platform.